Hey folks, uh, I'm Laszlo and I made something, uh, something you might like. Uh, it's made for DigitalOcean and it's called OneClickInfrastructure.com. And uh, what's that? Uh, it, it has a sim simple promise is that once your cluster is up, you can install uh, cluster components, uh, infrastructure components for logging and metrics and, and your traffic routing for the ingress controller part uh, and later on many other things as well. Uh, Basically, you can achieve that in uh, three uh, steps. Uh, first, you have to make a Git repository where all the configuration will be stored. Then you pick your uh, components, uh, Grafana Loki for logging, Nginx for ingress controller, certificate manager for uh, free SSL certificates. So this one is, is rather cool. You get a uh, free SSL uh, without purchasing any certificate from any authority for hundreds of dollars. And once you have uh, picked the components you need, uh, you just write the configuration to Git. And then there is a one-time setup, uh, which uh, bootstraps the automation, just a few commands. And once you uh, do that, then uh, every change in Git will be synced down onto your cluster. So uh, that's uh, basically the GitOps approach. So in this video, uh, I'm going to create uh, a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, then I'm going to use one-click infra to provision a few uh, of those components, uh, logging and so on. And uh, once uh, that is done, um, I'm going to show you uh, what are those tools and uh, how, to, how to get started with them. So uh, yeah, uh, I am starting the cluster up right now, which will take a few minutes. Um, and I'm going to download the config file and get access to the cluster with the kubectl. So this getting started guide is uh, very, very good for uh, for DigitalOcean, uh, there will be just one uh, difference. Step four, instead of using the marketplace from DigitalOcean, we are going to use uh, oneclickinfra.com. And uh, why would you do that? Uh, actually, I have a very few good reasons. Uh, basically, uh, my promise with one-click infrastructure that all these components are, are curated and the expected features are going to work out of the box. Uh, I made a few tries with the marketplace DigitalOcean applications and uh, you know, uh, things that you would expect to be there uh, sometimes are missing. For example, getting the uh, IP address of the end user who is accessing your website. If you use the marketplace NGINX uh, installation, it will be just not part of it. Uh, using one-click infra, it will be there. And uh, later on, as uh, I expand one-click infra, you will get very nice dashboards and alerts and all the things that you would need for a uh, for a very modern uh, infrastructure setup uh, will be part of one-click infra. All right, so uh, I have downloaded the kube config and uh, I typically move the kube config uh, to its uh, permanent place, which is part of the slash uh, dot cube uh, folder. And I uh, point my uh, kube config to this uh, file. And once I do that, I uh, I am looking at my DigitalOcean cluster, which is not up yet. It's going to take a few uh, minutes to get there. All right, uh, I'm going to fast forward the video uh, to the point where the cluster is up. So uh, we're gonna continue rather soon. All right, it took like two, and two or three minutes until the cluster is almost up. Uh, now there's a node which is in ready state, that's good. And then we have the pods, all the system pods are running. So that's great. Uh, let's uh, continue to one-click infra. So first of all, I'm going to log into GitHub to authorize uh, one-click infra to access my configuration repository. And I'm also going to install it under my personal um, uh, Git account, GitHub account. And um, you know, I'm usually anxious myself to give access to a third party. Uh, when it comes to source code, but instead of you giving access to all your repositories, you are going to give access to just the single configuration repository that you are um, going to use to store the config. So one click infra will not have access to anything else. And uh, for that purpose, I am uh, creating right now a, a Git repository, GitOps uh, dash DigitalOcean, which is private. And then uh, once it's uh, ready, uh, I pick this repo on the uh, authorization screen. Good, uh, and I install the application. Uh, I have to, uh, I have 
to uh, log into GitHub for that. But by now, I am back to One Click Infra. Uh, it uh, recognized me, uh, hey, One Click Infra, and I'm going to pick this single repo I just authorized. Good, so step one is done. Uh, step two, components. Uh, DigitalOcean is pre-selected because I accessed it on the DigitalOcean uh, site. And um, now uh, you might want to uh, pick and choose the component. Uh, for this demo, I'm going to install everything because uh, uh, Grafana Loki is something that uh, will be used uh, to look at the application logs on a dashboard. So you could tail the, the container logs, but instead there will be a nice dashboard with, uh, with the charts and everything. Uh, there is usually a one pager for each component so uh, you can uh, uh, see what you can expect, how you can interact with the tools and how to get started. So Grafana Loki, I enabled it, so that's, that's great. Uh, Nginx, uh, that is going to uh, be used to route traffic to various subdomains of your, of your uh, company domain. I enable it and tell it that I'm going to use uh, the digitalocean.oneclickinfra.com subdomain. <coughs> and all my application will be actually placed under this wildcard. So uh, star do one click infra. We are going to need a DNS entry uh, later on for that. But for now, that's about it for configuration. And uh, certificate manager, as said before, I am loving free, I'm loving to get uh, free certificates. And for that, I am just giving my email to, to Let's Encrypt. Uh, because uh, sometimes they are messaging me if my certificate is expiring or there is some issue. Uh, all right, so doing all that, uh, there is a little change set at step three. Uh, vendor was selected and a few components with some configuration was added, so that's great. And I'm writing the config now to Git. And uh, it takes a few seconds, but then I am going to be able to inspect the changes on uh, GitHub. And uh, there is a single commit. So everything in the repo right now was uh, pushed by uh, one click infra. There are two folders. One is for bootstrapping the automation and the second one is for the components, the components that are just selected. And uh, for example, Grafana Loki, um, in this YAML file, there is typically things that uh, you would do yourself. I am using a, a Helm chart inside uh, one click infra, those open source Helm charts that you would use yourself. However, I am uh, giving it some default values as well. So the configuration will reflect uh, what DigitalOcean likes and uh, what works best for DigitalOcean. Uh, for Loki, there is not, not much spe uh, special things going on, but for example, for uh, uh, NGNX, uh, there is actually. So uh, if you do it yourself, you would have to add a few annotations. Uh, for example, to get the, the end user IPs, you would need the proxy protocol enabled. And if you do that, you have to do some further uh, um, things uh, in order for DigitalOcean to, to work well uh, with, uh, with Kubernetes. All right, so uh, it's written, the configuration is written. Now I need to do the one-time setup. And uh, for that, I am cloning the repo. Um, Uh, I'm cloning the repo. And uh, next step is to create a namespace just for this uh, automation. Uh, I'm getting the namespaces and uh, Flux was just created. Uh, and I apply everything from the bootstrap step folder. Many things were created. And I am just looking at pods in the Flux namespace just to see what was happening. What happened? Uh, there are two components, both are open source. One is the Helm operator to install the Helm charts and Flux to synchronize between Git and the cluster. So any change you make in Git will be just synchronized down onto your cluster. All right, these components are running. It means that uh, if I uh, get the namespaces again, I should see an infrastructure one because that uh, was defined in the Git repository. So if I go to components, uh, there is a, a namespace YAML uh, creating the infrastructure namespace and all the Helm charts are specified to be in this namespace. Uh, and if we look around in the infrastructure namespace, uh, you can see that all those components that uh, you picked are actually there. 
it's gonna take a few minutes um, until all the, the containers are, or all the images are pulled from the registry and it's initializing, it's starting up and so on. And um, once it's there, um, we are going to access uh, Grafana Loki and we are going to look into the application logs. And uh, where we are going to access Loki? Well, if you go back to one click infra, uh, Loki has a nice uh, uh, one pager on uh, how to access it. Um, this one pager recommends a port forward, which you can always do. It's like uh, um, bringing a, a remote uh, internal service onto your local host. So you can access it on localhost port 8888. Uh, but instead of that, uh, with one click infra, I, <clears throat> I am also creating um, an, an ingress. Now an ingress is something that tells uh, Kubernetes, uh, what application to display on what URL. And um, this is going to be the URL. And uh, now if there is a domain name, you would expect to have some DNS configuration ahead of us. And actually there, there is something we need to do. And uh, for that, uh, on the DigitalOcean uh, uh, dashboard, we are going to uh, locate this uh, load balancer because uh, this load balancer is being created on DigitalOcean, which is then paired up with the Nginx proxy inside the cluster. And this uh, load balancer IP is what we need to put into the uh, uh, DNS provider we have. So by now, uh, there is an IP address created. And uh, I just uh, add it under a wildcard domain, uh, the star.do uh, under my one click infra uh, website. Cool, so the DNS entry, I have created it, and um, I'm going to just look it up um, to see if the changes uh, are, are propagated or not. Now, there is an IP address returned, but it's not, or is it? Is it the new one? Uh, yeah, and with 141, and it's, okay, so uh, Cloudflare was very fast. Looks like my DNS entry was, uh, created and propagated over, over the internet. So uh, if I go here, uh, Grafana should load here. Now I see an SSL error. Uh, it's because for the certificates to be provisioned, uh, the, the very first time when you provision the very first certificate, it needs five minutes until uh, the, uh, uh, basically we register with Let's Encrypt. Uh, and we can monitor that with uh, with uh, looking up the cluster issuer um, component. Um, and it, it's typically um, created five minutes after it's, uh, it's uh, first deployed. And to do that, we can just monitor when the other components were uh, deployed. And they were deployed three minutes, 50 seconds ago. So it's just a minute and 10 seconds more to wait, uh, which I'm going to just fast forward. All right, looks like the, the cluster issuer has been created and uh, we can actually uh, catch uh, the cert manager in action, uh, meaning that uh, it's now uh, obtaining the certificate. There is a second uh, ingress defined. And by now uh, there is a secret uh, which holds the Grafana TLS certificate. So if we navigate back here and we refresh, then we have uh, Grafana running. Cool, so uh, in five minutes we had NGINX uh, DNS SSL certificates uh, up and running and to access Grafana uh, I just go back again to the one click infra page which uh, tells me that uh, the default username is admin and uh, the password is uh, again stored in a Kubernetes secret uh, which I can uh, get from with this one-liner uh, you should make a note of this password and use this uh, going forward. So that's admin. And uh, one more thing. Um, so there is this percentage sign at the end and I have to be sure oh, to not copy that. So admin user and then a long password and then I'm logged in. Cool, so uh, this is not about, uh, this video is not about uh, getting into that in intro to Grafana, but just to, to show you how to access the application logs. 
uh, go to the explorer view, pick logs, and uh, um, Loki is using, using Kubernetes labels, uh, just like uh, Prometheus, by the way. And uh, if I'm just looking at the access log of Nginx, we can see the log volume up here and the various uh, requests it, it gets. And uh, hopefully this is my IP address because uh, I am the one uh, accessing uh, this platform. So just confirming uh, what's my IP. Um, IPv4, yes, so 29.49, oh my God, this site is horrible. Yeah, but uh, 29.49, uh, and actually that, that we are seeing here in the logs. Cool, so, so that was that. Uh, again, it's uh, one-click infra, and then you can use it to install various components on your cluster. Uh, now the basic stuff is there, and I'm going to extend it uh, with more and more components, dashboards, best practices, uh, and uh, various knowledge uh, articles around uh, the topic. So hope you like it and hope you're gonna enjoy it. So uh, thank you for your attention.